decisions, decisions, decisions. One of the hardest parts about life, one of the hardest parts about becoming an adult is making decisions. Why? Because decisions have a finality and they have consequences. All decisions, whether it's a good decision or a bad decision, it brings a level of finality to the situation and it will bring consequences, good or bad. And as you get older in life and you go on your journey as an adult, you realize that that is very true. And your mind struggles to make decisions because as you get older, you have less room for error or you have been scarred so much in the past that you are still hurting from previous decisions. Whether it was your fault or not, you suffered and you're indecisive. Because when you fail or when you go through pain, it creates a level of indecision. It creates indecision because you are fearful. You're fearful of feeling that pain again. You don't want to feel that pain again. And so you become more cautious. When you're young, you're more reckless. You don't really put too much thought. You don't put too much research into decisions because you're young. You got your whole life ahead of you, whether it's a money decision, relationship decision. And it is true that when you're young, that's time to make mistakes. But it's also true that if you want to get ahead in life, when you're young, start to separate yourself from your friends, become an adult early, and make grown-up decisions so you can live a better life. But what I want to share with you here tonight, as one of the decisions that's in the forefront of my life at this season of my life, I'm mid, mid-age, I just turned 39 this month, and I would say overall I'm relatively in a good place in my life. I'm healthy, I have a job, I'm living below my means, uh, I'm living on my terms, I don't have any relationships in my life, mainly because I'm on my terms. Now, put that in context, right? Because you have to remember that as I sit here tonight, I am living in my car by choice. I'm living below my means. I have a remote job. I have no pets. I have no relationships. That's me here today at 39. At 29, that was different. At 19, that was different. I owned a house. I moved out at 22. I owned a house for 15 years. I had relationships. I had love interest. I had friends. I went to parties. I went to clubs. I had a pet. I had a pet for 10 years. And I worked various different jobs from low paying jobs to construction jobs to office jobs to a variety of different things. So what I'm sharing with you is don't just take a snapshot at someone's life and say, I want to make the decision they made. You know, your life is basically an evolution. So you can get some insight from previous decisions and from other people's decisions, but you have to understand what time frame are you looking at them at life. And if you ever question or, or you're debating what decision to make, here's key, guy. Here's the, one of the first gems tonight. Even though I think you can get some other stuff from the things I said. Here's the first gem tonight. When you are ready to make a decision that requires a commitment, and all decisions require a level of commitment, I want you to think about the length of the of the commitment. Why? Because life changes a lot in five to ten years. Life changes a lot in five to ten years. Think about it. I am 39 today. Ten years ago at 29, my life was totally different and I had different desires, different interests. I want you to take your age right now. If you're 18, 58, 48, or 78, I want you to take your age right now and I want you to minus 10. And I want you to think about what you were doing 10 years ago in your life. 
what your mindset was, what your desires were, what your interests were. Many times, if you look back 10 years ago, your life was in a totally different shape. You had totally different mindset. You had a totally different desire. Why is that important? Because if you're getting ready to make a commitment for 10, 20, 30 years, even a five-year car payment is a big decision. Why? Look, guys, I bought my car uh, three years ago. I paid off for it a, a year early. But five years is a long time. Like, you think, like... Yeah, you just think about the monthly payment, but then you get into the second and third year. You say, I'm still paying on this thing. Five years is a long time. Ten years is a long time. Life changes a lot. So here's the first gem. Before you make a decision, think about the length of the, uh, of the uh, commitment. Think about the length of the commitment. Should you fear the length of a commitment? No, you shouldn't fear anything in life, but you should give thought to things in life. That's the difference between an adult and an immature child. I mean, you give a level of thought. Does it mean if you think about it, if you analyze it, you'll make the right decision? No, because that's the other part about decisions. That's why a lot of people don't like to make them. Decisions, you're guaranteed that you're, you're never going to always make the right decision. That's why a lot of people like people like Donald Trump. Why? Because even if he's making the wrong decision, he's making some decision. And most people are indecisive. That's why most people like a take charge person and there's value to a take charge person because someone who takes charge and is willing to make mistakes, guess what? Even if they make a lot of mistakes, they get more stuff done than someone who analyzes it for 20 years. So there is value to a take charge person. There's value to someone who's willing to make a mistake because they get more, you know, Donald, you know, I grew up in New Jersey, right outside of New York. Donald Trump's first claim to fame was there was a skating rink in Central Park that was sitting there for years and the bureaucracy, no one, everyone was scared to make a decision on how to get this bill, you know, and get, get things. And the city was so frustrated that nothing was getting built in central park in the area. They gave the development to Donald Trump because he was a take charge guys. He was willing to make decisions and he got that thing built. Now during that same time period, his taxes were revealed. He lost a billion dollars. So he was making decisions, he was going forward, but he also made a lot of mistakes. But even if you make him a lot of mistakes, there's some value. That's the second gem. The first gem is your life's going to be a lot different in 10 years. So think about the length of the commitment. The second gem is, look, you have to be willing to make mistakes because progressively that's how things go forward. You can only analyze things so much. Now, obviously, I, I want to take caution because there's some people just waiting to hear that. There's some people that are so immature. Oh, you're going to die soon anyway. Just do it. Just do it. Those people, their life's a train wreck. You have to find some type of balance. Decisions. I'm sitting here tonight. I'm thinking about, should I buy a home base? Living on the road for two years, I have mainly a core objective of this. Move to Florida and live below my means so I can live more life, live more of life on my terms. And if God forbid the day ever comes when I lose my job, I want more flexibility into doing things that I love, that are creative, that inspire me. Because I don't want to go back to how I felt at 25 or 29. And how I felt at 25 and 29 was if I lost my job, I got to hurry up and get another job, even if I don't like it. And I'm caught in this rat race where I am working to pay for a house that doesn't inspire me to live in a state that doesn't inspire me. That's how you get caught in a rat race. And that's how you get caught in sedating yourself, drinking alcohol every night, getting into unhealthy relationships, because you got to have some happiness. And I don't blame them. If you're totally uninspired with life, you got to do something to make you happy. My whole goal was I want to live a life responsibly that I can still almost live like I'm on vacation every day, but do it responsibly. Because I don't want to live in poverty, guys. I didn't get in my car because I want to live in poverty. So I'm thinking about buying a home base. So what am I thinking about? I'm thinking about the same gems I just told you. I said, Sam, how long is this commitment? You know, once you buy a property, um, you're committed to it until either you, until you sell it. Even if you pay off your mortgage, you're committed to a piece of property until you sell it. Because there's always taxes, there's always utility bills, and if there's an HOA, which stands for Homeowners Association, a Homeowners Association is when a group of people 
share the common property in the community. They pay a monthly fee to pay for the property taxes of the common areas to have amenities such as pool, gated community, whatever it may be. So everyone's pulling their mind together. And that, you know, there's a property management company and someone else does the common area maintenances and you have more amenities. But you're you're bind you're bonded to those people until you sell. Which I know because the, the condo I owned for 15 years, it was an HOA, so I understand that. So how entangled do you want to get? Decisions are about what am I going to give up and what am I going to get? Every decision is a trade-off. There is no decision in life that you just get and you don't give something. It doesn't, it's not that way in life. You know, when I, when I sold my house and I started living in my car, I got a lot of freedom financially, emotionally, mentally. What did I give up? A lot of amenities, a lot of comforts. Sleeping in my car in two winters in New Jersey, I gave up a lot of comforts. And there's no way to keep warm when it gets zero below. I got very sick. I got walking pneumonia. What do I give up in Florida living in my car? Hey, guys, it's hot as hell in the summer. It's hot as hell in the winter. It's the warmest state in America. But I still enjoy it. I give up certain things. And that's how you evaluate. That's how you evaluate. There's nothing that's perfect. I often say life is not about being perfect. It's about being better. So you're going to give up something. You're going to get something. Only you can figure out are there more pros and cons for you? Everyone's different. Look, you know, some people masturbate to Asian porn. Some people, you know, masturbate to uh, Pakistani porn. What does that have to do with anything? Look, everyone likes something different. That's what it has to do with. Everyone has different desires. Everyone's in a diff different season of their life. Some people want to travel aimlessly. Some people want to start a family. You tend to link up with people that have a similar mindset so you feel like they're making decisions that you can relate to. So sometimes in life we get caught in what they call the bubble. They often say it about political leaders. They're caught in their own bubble. But in YouTube, you're in a bubble. Like in YouTube, if you're looking at nomad channels, guess what YouTube recommends? More, no, no, more nomad channels. So now you think, well, everyone's living in their car. Society's going to change. Guys, only 1% of America is living in their car. Society ain't going to change, guys. You, you think that the masses are looking to sell their house and living in a parking lot in Walmart? No. It's just that YouTube has recommended 10 videos that it looks like that to you. You're caught in a bubble, guys. Donald Trump's not moving in his car, and neither is uh, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Let me tell you something, guys. Not a lot of people want to live in their car, guys. Wake up call. <laughs> Wake up call, guys. People often say to me, Sam, Florida's getting overcrowded. Guys, Florida's empty as hell right now. All the snowbirds are up north. Why? Because it gets hot as hell every summer. There was a rainstorm this afternoon. Still magical. Still better than the Jersey Shore because it was cold in the Jersey Shore today. But what I'm trying to tell you is every summer, people migrate back up north. All the Canadians, they're on a six-month visa. Guys, they're gone. They spend a lot of money here in the winter. They use their six months up and they travel back up north. Florida's not going to become overcrowded. Why? Because look, guys, pe most people don't like it when it's so hot, your dashboard's melting. But you're caught in a bubble of everything's Florida. Now, I like everything Florida. I like living in my car. But what I'm trying to tell you is you have to get outside your bubble. Why? Because that's how you kind of make some lot of decisions. Because if you make a decision like, you know, you're going to buy an RV before everyone else buys them, you're making an irrational decision because you're inside your bubble. Now, if you've done the research and you can afford an RV or home base or whatever it is, I'm using examples out of my life, but if you can use and you say, it's below my means, I want to do it, there's no perfect thing, there's more pros than cons, I'm getting it. But you shouldn't be getting it because I got to get it before everyone else gets it. A rush decision is a bad decision. Now, look, sometimes a planned out decision is a bad decision. So, I'm, look, I, I, there's no exact science to life. Life's a little bit of an art form. <laughs> I remember I was dating some girl. <laughs> she was an art teacher. Her art work looked like crap. I told her it looked good, but it looked like crap, guys. My, well, I can't say it because I don't know she's why. There was one, actually, art girl, uh, art teacher I dated, though. Her artwork looked great, and I did mean that. Everyone's different, guys. But what I could tell you, and I don't want to get off track, even though I will say that public school teachers are more freaky than uh, strippers. Uh, pro tip, guys. 
If you want to date a freaky girl, don't date a stripper. Date a public school teacher or a nurse. Okay? They're the biggest freaks out there, guys. The stripper just is playing a game, guys. She's a pro. You guys ain't ready for that. Milano out there got a Colombian girl. She's waiting for uh, his social security. Milano been through enough wars, though. Milano going to hand her off to Emilio. Why? Because Milano worked hard for his social security. He's not going to make it rain. Milano, you save up your money, man, because you still got to pay for uh, supplemental health insurance until you're 67. Don't, don't let them kill you, Milano. Save up your money, man. <laughs> XP Jeffy knows. XP Jeffy dated a public school teacher. How did it end? Total disaster. <laughs> Total disaster. So what I could tell you guys, if you're faced with a decision of should you buy a home base or should you date a public school teacher, <laughs> Do your research, man. <laughs> Do your research. And ask yourself, are there more pros than cons? L you know, look look at the public school teacher's mother, because that's how she's going to look in 30 years. You know, look at the community where it was 30 years ago, because it's going to change a lot in 30 years, guys. Time changes a lot. So the community you're looking to buy in, it may get wiped out by a hurricane. The hot public school teacher you're looking to date, <laughs> she may look like her mother in 30 years. Are you willing to commit? to a long time knowing that something's going to change. That's a big thing. Everything changes. So you have to understand you're committing to something. Is it appreciating or depreciating? They say real estate tends to appreciate over time. They say RVs tend to depreciate over time. That's financially speaking. Now, emotionally speaking, you may be dying. If you buy a 30, if you buy a house for a 30-year mortgage, it may appreciate over 30 years, but you may live an uninspired life that, that you might as well have been dead. There's a scripture that says, What good is it if a person lives their whole life but they never enjoy life? They were better off dead. Pro-choice, guys. Paul said, I wish I was dead, but for your sake I'm still alive. Pro-choice. So what I could tell you is this. Financial is only one part of the decision. Because again, if your property appreciates, but you live an uninspired life, what good is it? Now, you get in an RV, it may depreciate financially, but you may enjoy life more. Milano's out there living his best life. He's down in Miami, about to collect his full social security check. He's got a place to park. Everyone knows Milano down in Miami, guys. He's banging out Colombian girls left and right. But Milano, be careful out there, please. You know, weather's hot all the time. Milano gave me an insight. He said, Sam, I like I like the fact that Florida's hot. It keeps people away during the summer. I remember Milano when you told me that. You said, Sam, it's a good thing that Florida's hot in the summer because it keeps the masses away. And that's true. If Florida had a mild climate all year round, guess what it would be? California. That's why the masses go to California because of the climate. And, and, and let me tell you something. California's got a lot of jobs. Google, DoorDash, where'd they come from? California. They didn't come from Mississippi. Google, DoorDash, Apple, all the big tech companies, they didn't come from Mississippi. They didn't come from Idaho. They came from California, guys. Show love and respect. I'm tired of people shitting on California because California has produced some of the greatest companies this country has ever known. Okay, And it's got some of the best weather this country has to offer. Please. Okay, I know Pelosi's a disaster. I know that. But guess what? Donald Trump came from New York. <laughs> Liberal New York. That's where Donald Trump's from, guys. He's not from uh, Idaho, okay? So please, wake up, guys. He just panders to you because he knows. Where'd Ronald Reagan come from? I think he was living in California. Wasn't he a movie star? Come on, guys. Back to decisions. Everyone's different. Am I going to buy a home base in Florida? I haven't made a final decision. I want to try to make it by the end of this week. I'm not in a rush, but there's a time window. There's a time window to every decision. You should never make a rush decision. If you're not sure, you know, again, I think a lot of times when people are very indecisive, that's why they like someone else to make the decision so they can blame them. Part of being adult is you accept responsibility. If you get in your car and it doesn't work out and you decide to live in it, you can't blame someone else. You got to take accountability. 
If you marry someone, you can't say, oh, they screwed me. No, you married them because they needed their immigration papers. They screwed you, but you played the game. Okay, come on, guys. You have to be an adult and take accountability for your life. You know the game. It's painful to admit we made bad decisions. Guys, I've made bad decisions, guys. <laughs> so I'm not immune to bad decisions. doesn't matter how much wisdom you have. Wisdom will help you make better decisions. And I'm very cautious as I get older, but I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. Donald Trump lost a billion dollars, guys. Thank God he had a rich dad. Okay. But there's wisdom in what he did. He didn't give up. So what I could tell you guys is I am now looking at decisions as how much am I committed financially, emotionally, mentally. And even more so now as I get older and I have established a career, because again, I worked a lot of different jobs. Don't just take a snapshot of where I'm at now and say, how do I get there? Work in a ditch, you know, work at a, a music store, work a variety of jobs and build your career. That's how you get where I'm at. Okay. And sleep in your car for two years. Then, then, then you're at where I'm at. Okay? Until then, you're not there. But now I look at things. I do look at the financials. Why? Because I've learned that, look, financial, financial independence is part of a level of freedom. If you're not financially independent, you're going to stay in an enabling relationship with an unhealthy family member that holds money over your head. When I made a decision to live in my car... I tried to tell my father he got very upset. And as I look back, I think he got upset because he realized I was getting a lot of freedom and I, I wouldn't need him for anything. I don't know why, because I never I never held anything over his head. I, I'm not that type of person. I don't hold things over people's head. If I got to play that game with you, that I got to hold something over your head, you're not in my life. Guys, I like to be alone 99.9% .9 of the time. So, and it was a burden for me to keep in touch with my father, but I did it out of respect. Okay, he wanted me to call him every week, come visit him once in a while. I did it. It was a pain in the ass. I did it. I didn't complain. But once he started playing the game with me holding something over my head, I said, look, dad, I'm making the decision as an adult. So I said, I'm not asking to come camp in your house or, or on your lawn. <laughs> I'm going to live my life. And I think he kind of knew I was going to Florida. And I think, I think knowing that I was going to be totally independent and not needing anyone, I think he got scared. I think insecure relationships reveal themselves when you no longer need that person. Like when someone needs you for their immigration papers, guess what they do? They marry Donald Trump. You think if Milana was a citizen, she'd marry Trump if he was rich, maybe. If not, she'd have married an Uber driver. Why? <laughs> hey, look, when you need your papers, you need your papers. But what I could tell you is this, guys. My father then, when I told him I didn't want to, uh, I was about to do something else, he got upset when he found out I was living in my car or doing something different. I sold my house. I said, look, dad, I told him, I'm not, I'm not asking for approval. He said, I made the decision. It doesn't affect you. I don't know why you care. And he started like throwing stuff on my face. He goes, well, remember when I lent you $5,000 to buy a house? I said, yeah, dad, I remember that decision. And I remember me asking you, I'll pay you back now. And you said, no, no I'm your father. You don't have to do that. And he goes, well, too bad. You sold your house or whatever. I want my $5,000 back. I said, no problem. I wrote a check for $5,000 and I changed my number. I don't play that game where you give something to someone. Like, you know, I, I played that game with a, with a public school teacher. I said, yeah, I'll hang your ceiling fan, but I want to go out for coffee one night. Don't play that game, guys. If you're going to hang a, a, someone's ceiling fan, charge them $125 per hour labor, material not included, and that's it. Keep it strictly business. But I failed. I made some bad decisions, guys. <laughs> I can't tell you how many ceilings fans I hang, bro. You don't even want to know. <laughs> last, last Asian girl caught me, man. I, I was mounting her microwave, man. <laughs> what a disaster. But I, I did it. I made a bad decision. So part of your decisions have got to be money. Why does it have to be money? Because look, you're on the hook. You're on the hook to the mortgage company. You're on the hook to the HOA. You're on the hook to the property tax. Now look, even if you live in your car, you're on the hook to the gas station because you're always going to need gas. You're on the hook to car insurance. You're on the hook to campground fees. 
So, but there's less financial obligation, but there's more mental obligation. Some people don't do good moving. What's best for you? That's the decision. And I do look at the emotional, emotional and mental aggravation that the decision is going to cause me. Because once I've checked off the financial part of it, the emotional and mental is something I think about a lot. I share it a lot in this channel, but I have to keep sharing it because that's where I'm at in my life. Whatever decision I make, I have to account for my mental and emotional health, not just financial health. If not, that's how you end up in a disaster. And so I haven't come to a final conclusion, but I am evaluating all things. I accept that whatever decision I make, nothing's going to be perfect, and I accept things will change over time. I am cautious. I read an article about buying an RV lot, but you can apply it to anything. It says, when you're getting ready to commit some something, always err on a side of caution. What does that mean? That means, look, you know, don't do it if you're not 100% sure. Now, there's things I did that I wasn't 100% sure, and I thank God I did because I progressively moved forward. But as you get older, you got to be careful. Okay. And I, I'm very careful of not being entangled. Every decision I make, now we're going to go all live comments, guys. Every decision I make now, one of the core things I ask myself is how much entanglement is involved if I commit to this thing. You know, I was taking a shower in Planet Fitness today, like trying to unwind. Because when it's summertime in Florida and you live out of your car, you're going to be taking a shower like every day. If you're not, you're going you're to be stinking. All right. And there's some people out here stinking, guys. <laughs> hey, but look, I dated a girl. She stunk. Uh, she probably took a shower every day. I don't know. So no guarantee. No guarantee. But what I can tell you is, I'm back to the story. I, I was in the, a Planet Fitness shower. I said, man. It feels good to take a shower, just let the hot water run, and I don't have to worry about a water heater. When I took a shower in my condo, I would always, even when the, even when I replaced the water heater, I would worry about I'm using up the water heater. Now, when I drive my car and I hit my brakes, I think about every time I hit my brakes, I'm using up my brakes. I just replaced my brakes recently. But it's only one major thing to worry about your car. When you have a car, a house, a relationship, a dog, a lover... Then you, you, there's not just one major thing you're worrying about. You're worrying about a variety of different things. And that's how you get burnt out. And that's how you make an irrational decision because you're desperate. Desperation bursts the worst decisions. When you're desperate, you make a very poor decision. I've been there. It's understandable. Because you got limited choices. When you got limited choices, someone someone like a Trump will stand over you and they're going to renegotiate their trade deal. Why? Because that's how this world works, guys. People, people want leverage over you. And when they get leverage over you, they use it. I hate to say it, it's true, though. That's the way this world works. Okay. That's how capitalism works. Capitalism is you make maximum profit based on the situation. Capitalism is not the golden rule. What's the golden rule? It's the Christian scripture that Jesus based the whole Bible on. Treat others how you want to be treated. We don't live that in America. We live on capitalism. What's capitalism? Companies exist solely to make a profit. Healthcare, everything. It solely exists to make a profit. Guys, we worship the dollar. And that's why Jesus was betrayed by Judas. Judas. For gold coins. It's nothing new under the sun, guys. And that's why money's part of the decision. Because whether it's betraying Jesus or who you vote on, people people like money, man. Divorce, a big part of divorce is money. I've heard it said that poor people tend not to get a divorce because they have to pool their money together to survive. I often say, my, my grandparents came over here from Italy. Most immigrants, and New Jersey is a major hub for immigration. We had Ellis Island, which is now closed. Ellis Island, where many immigrants came. It's right off uh, Jersey, City, Jersey City Shore, right off uh, Manhattan. Where the Statue of Liberty is. And when immigrants come here, and I see it now. I mean, back in the day, it was people from Europe. It was the Irish. It was the... Italians, now it's mainly uh, the big Indian population up north. 
at least in the Northeast and the West is probably Asian. Well, different, you know. But the bottom line is when it's Mexican, Asian, Indian, Italian, Irish, whatever demographic immigrated to America, the first generation huddles together. They don't get a divorce. Why? Because they have to pool their resources together to survive. And then over time, what happens is generation by generation, people move up in society. They gain more financial independence. And it's often said that wealthier people tend to get a divorce more. Middle class are wealthy because they don't need each other to survive. When you don't need someone else, you're, you're quicker to walk away from them. Why? Because you don't need the aggravation. You have options. When you have no options, guess what you're going to do? You ain't going to do anything. Why? Because you have to survive. Survival is ingrained, embedded in the human mind. You make decisions based on survival. Decisions are based on what's going to allow you to survive. And then as you progress, what's going to allow you to thrive? Decisions are based on what's going to allow you to survive. And then once you survive, what's going to allow you to thrive? There's two different site. Te- there's two different types of decisions, survival and thrival. And as you get more independence, you want to thrive because you realize, look, it, you have to survive. But if you're living a life of just survival, you have no fun in life. Then it, like the scriptures say, you're better off dead. Huh, that's what the scriptures say. And that's why I like I often say, because I mean, a lot of people in the nomad community, they want to try to survive on $1,000 or less. I'm not mad at them. But I'm not in this game to survive. I'm in this game to thrive financially, mentally, emotionally. I don't want to try to survive off $1,000 a month, guys. Sorry, not for me. Not for me. If I have no other choice, guess what? Then I'll survive. Now, but if you have a choice, if you don't have a choice, then it's not like you should be ashamed of your situation. If you have no other choice, you have no other choice. But if you're driving a Dodge Charger, if you're moonwalking to Subway, if you're you know, ordering pizza with your mom's credit card and you, and you got choices in life, you're not just stuck in survival. You should start to make better choices to, to what allows you to thrive, not just survive. And part of thriving is figuring out what you need to do as an adult to build your independence and to get you happy again in life, get you excited. And uh, that's it, guys. We'll go to all live comments now. I'll roll down my window. We'll see you guys got to say. Okay, peace and love. Guys, I appreciate if you click that thumbs up button, share the video, show some love. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I go live every night on this channel. Let me see if anyone got blocked. I'm sure there's probably, well, not blocked. Oh, Doug, how'd Doug get blocked? Well, you only get blocked, not blocked. You only get filtered if you say a curse word or there's a crazy emoji. Uh, but Doug's comment was the only one. So now let's just go to all live comments. Uh, take him in order. Snow Panther, what's up, brother? Shout out to Minnesota. Right on time, brother. Good to see you. My man, Eric, first thumbs up. Well, I appreciate that support, man. Good to see you. I appreciate that. My man traveling van laughing his butt off at Big Dirty. What's Big Dirty Tom? Oh, I miss Big Dirty. What's up top? Sammy, did you flip that mattress? Nah, I know Big Dirty's making a little joke about him delivering RVs and doing some wild stuff in them. Big Dirty, first commenter. I saw you, man. XB Jeffy, love you, brother. Love you too. What type of relationship should you be in? A reciprocal, meaning an equally respected relationship. If you're in a relationship and you start to feel like a chihuahua, that has no choice on whether to wear a sweater to the Christmas party. Guys, you're not in an equal partnership. You're an accessory. An equal partnership is two people making joint decisions. A chihuahua, a chihuahua or some type of small dog being forced to wear a sweater is not an equal partnership. You're in bondage. You're in slavery, guys. I hate to say that. Okay. But when you when you go, when you look around in life on who you're gonna date, okay, public school teacher, hmm, or whoever, 
I want you to start to look at it. When you show up to their house, it's, oh, you're wearing that tonight? Like, you know, like, oh, you're going to wear that? Like, oh, that's not good enough. Huh. I remember one of my favorite movies of all time, Silver Linings Playbook. Silver Linings Playbook with Bradley Cooper. And he had a little bit of a mental disorder, and so did a girl. And he showed up to this girl's, uh, what was it, Jennifer uh, Lawrence? He showed up to her house, or her sister's house. They were on a double date set up. And he was debating or not, wh not whether to wear a football jersey. Because, guys, when you're young, girls think, oh, football jersey's fine. But when you're older, they don't want you wearing a football jersey. They want to start to dress you. You're a chihuahua. That's not an equal partnership, guys. I believe in equal rights for men and women. But I don't believe that anyone should be treated like a chihuahua. I don't believe it. And I don't believe chihuahua should be forced to do that. Guys, dogs already have uh, fur. Come on, guys. But he showed up with a football jersey. And I remember like people looked at him crazy. Like, why do you wear that? <laughs> Did I ever have, even though I used to dress nice, I had a girl say that one time. <laughs> like two times. I had two times I said, I said, this bitch's gone. She's gone in my mind. I was still, sometimes I still got, I still got the raw end of the deal. But now I look at their life, total disaster. <laughs> I'm not even going to call out any names. And I'm thinking of some in my mind right now. How their life end, total disaster, guys. <laughs> they would love to trade places with me, even though they'll never say it. They're totally on a spiral life. I'll date them 20 years from now after they've been divorced or after they're playing the grieving widow, even though they basically killed their husband. <laughs> they basically choked their husband with the chihuahua sweater. <laughs> yeah, I know the deal, guys. Come on, don't tell me that. All right, let's continue to read. Don't get me upset. John Settles, what's up, man? Hey, Sam, have a great week. My friend will thank you. Love your channel. I appreciate your support, brother. Keep up the great conversations, John. I appreciate you. Love to your mind, confidence to your soul. Keep doing you, brother. Minimalize your life so that you can use your intelligence without people threatening you, okay? Uh, because, John, you're an intelligent man. You have a lot of different gifts. And when you feel you need to speak up, speak up because you have something to offer to the conversation. You're an intelligent person and you have a kind heart. Uh, so don't ever feel shy about respectfully sharing your gift. Big Dirty. I'm a traveling van. Comment relates to the comment I left earlier. I know. Traveling vans make uh big dirty was making a joke. Ooh, what's up, brother? Who you're live? I'm live, brother. I've been cleaning for the past 14 hours. Huh. Any RV. I think about that. Like if I buy an RV on an RV lot, I have to clean it. Like right now, I go into Starbucks, I eat something, I, I get out of there. If I crumbs or something, like I don't leave a mess behind, but I don't have to ever clean. I don't have to clean a coffee maker. Like, you know, think about that. Like, it's not just about not leaving a mess behind. If I made my own coffee at home, guess what I have to do? I have to clean the coffee pot. How do I know? Because I owned a house for 15 years. And then if you have to clean stuff, guess what you have to do? You have to have dishwashing detergent. You know, you may have a leaky sink because you're using things now to clean your silverware. Even if you have paper plates and paper towels. Guys, that's a whole game too. And there's still a mess. Cleaning for 14 hours. We live in a country where you have to hire a cleaning contractor to come to your house because you don't have enough time because you're working your entire life to pay for your house. The cleaning business and the storage unit business are basically running America. You're paying people to clean a house that you don't have time to do it. You're paying people to hold your stuff at a storage unit because you don't, you don't have time to use your stuff. I had to look, I had to cost analysis a storage unit for my RV. Why? Because if a hurricane comes, if I buy an RV lot on the beach, guess what I have to do? I have to get that RV towed to a storage unit somewhere and have it right out to the hurricane. Now, I can leave it on the island, but that thing can get blown away. So it's a risk reward. And it's liability, guys. Because if, if my stuff blows into someone else's stuff, guess what? Liability. They often say houses are liabilities. Now, it can be debated that houses have are assets. They build up equity over time. Yeah, but you pay a lot. And they're a liability. So something to think about. Let's continue. Woohoo, he's been cleaning for the past 14 hours. Making me depressed. Well, brother, I'm depressed for you. I'm sorry about that. I don't mean to laugh at your pain, but I've been through that. I've been through that. Look, when you when you have a house, even if it's an RV, you gotta have cleaning products. And I used to think it was fun. Like in the beginning of me having a house, I would throw on R. Kelly TP2. This was before he was a well-known molester. I'd throw on TP2. I'd light some candles. 
and I would clean. And that inspired me for a season of my life. How long? Maybe one year, two years. So again, don't just look at me now and say, I want to be where you're at, guys. I li I've lived a conventional life. And for a while, the conventional life, the conventional life inspired me. I enjoyed having a house, having a dog, walking around the community. And sometimes I look, do I want that again? And I think about the good times, but I think about the bad times, and I, I caution on the side of error. I mean, I caution, I err on the side of caution. Like I automatically with a home base, I kind of work, I kind of start at I I don't want to commit to this, and then I have to try to either talk myself into it or talk myself out of it. Sometimes people leave comments and say, Sam, it sounds like you're talking yourself out of something. I said, yeah, I basically am. Because sometimes in life, you got to talk yourself out of stuff. What should you talk yourself out of? Well, dating a public school teacher, start there. <laughs> you better talk yourself out of that, guys. <laughs> Please. Because why? Because, hey, look, she's got a secure job for the rest of her life. It's hard as hell to fire uh, a tenured public school teacher. So what I can tell you guys is she ain't going to be a nomad. She's got to get her pension. <laughs> she ain't be, You're going you're gonna to be living in that suburb for every, forever, guys. So get used to it. If you don't like the suburbs, don't date a public school teacher, guys. <laughs> You're going to die there. Okay. And then, and then when you die early, premature, guess who she wants to date? Tarzan. Who's Tarzan? That's me, guys. Just for fun. Because she's bored out of her mind for the past 20 years dating you or married to you. Now, will I do that? No, guys. I won't. Why? Because I don't want to live that life anymore. Good job. Uh, wow. WM. Yes, ready to leave this mess and get back to living a life on my terms. Well, that's a good mindset, brother. Keep going. John oh, John Suttles. Inspirational Sam. I appreciate that. M uh, W M. Only I have an innocent feline involved. A cat? Well, hey, look, you could travel with a cat if you have some accommodations. Cats are a little bit easier maintenance than dogs. But I don't I don't think you could do it in a vehicle. Why? Because you need climate control. You need an RV with RV hookups. And that could be just as expensive as an apartment. So look, pets are a big burden. Why don't I get another pet? Why, why, when my dog died, did I make the decision? Because I had to make the decision not to get another pet. Because they're a burden to take care of. They are. My dog showed me some of the greatest love. And I, I feel guilty saying that, but I would feel disingenuous not saying it. I'm very thankful for the 10 years I had my dog. At the end, it was very tough, guys. And I failed as a caretaker at times, and I realized how hard it is to be a caretaker. That's why even some of the uh, spouses that I know that basically buried their other spouse early, I don't blame them for being a grieving widow, because I understand they feel guilty. I felt guilty when I put my dog down, guys. Just like I'm sure you may feel guilty when you have to get a divorce, or you bury your husband or your wife. Why? Because you're going to think about the bad times. Even though you had a lot of good times, you think about the bad times. And it's painful. And it was very painful for me. And that's why I made the decision. I said, you know, it's a lot of work to care for another living being, whether it's a human being or, or, or pet. And I don't want to do that again. And if you think care, you know, like some people, if you think caretakers don't get frustrated, you, you know, you haven't been around caretakers. You haven't. Because there's a very thin line between a caretaker and an undertaker. Very thin. Undertaker just had a match with Goldberg. And guys, they were both old. They were both in their 50s. They couldn't even do body slams anymore. So right now, if you're in your 50s, guess what, guys? You're getting old. <laughs> guess what? You're getting old. Average life expectancy, 80. Some of you guys still waiting till this magical day when the light bulb's going to come on. Guess what that light bulb's going to be, guys? It ain't going to be a light bulb. Okay? It's going to be another type of light. You going into the great beyond. So live with urgency. Good job. Mary, three gems, thank you. Jack Fix, what's up, man? Thank you for the comments today. You also on a similar path. Sam, great conversation. I always say we don't age, we evolve. Yeah, unless you're 80, then you die. Keep on keeping on, my friend. Good job. I'm 49. Well, you're getting close. You're like Undertaker match uh, this weekend. You don't have much left. And still need to work for another 20 years, huh? You better. Then what I could tell you, man, is downsize and try to get a job transfer and try to live where it inspires you. But you should do whatever you want because what I can tell you is if you're 49 and you wait 20 years, don't quit your job because you always need money. But try to reposition your life because 59, 60, at 69, at 69, you're not going to be surfing. You're not going to be taking long walks on the beach. You're going to be parking in a handicapped spot. You're probably going to need some type of resource to help you because you have a limp. You're going to be thinking about getting a knee replacement that'll put you out of commission for another 12 months. And you're not going to be as mobile. 
You're not going to want to drive at night. What do 69-year-old people do? I don't want to drive once the sun goes down. Guys, once you get past a certain age, you don't want to drive when, when it's dark outside. Guys, guess what I got to do after this life feed? I got to drive. Okay. So that's not like, a, you know, so you got to be cautious, guys. But you also got to live with urgency. You got to do things responsibly. Good job. Yep. And I just got another thumbs down from somebody who's 69. Hey, not my fault you're old. We're all getting old. I'm going to try them I see all these people struggling around me just to get by, paying thousands in rent and mortgages every month. Uh, me lounging on the golf beaches, drinking something, coconut, saying, oh, you poor people. Yeah, well, travel man, though, don't forget, though, you put in the work, but don't forget also, though, that you had a season of life where you were married, you have you had a season of life when you rented, and you have some type of financial income where you don't have to work. So a lot of people don't have that, and you don't have any kids. So a lot of people, the, the light bulb doesn't come on until too late. So I'm not saying celebrate, keep celebrating because you, you put in the work. Look, you you changed your life, so celebrate. But just understand too, like, look, most people, they just got caught in a rat race. Uh, I almost got caught in a rat race, guys, and I was single, no kids. And that's what the light bulb came on. I said, man, I'm in my uh, late 30s. I said, if I don't do this now, when am I going to do it? Because I do know as you get older, it gets harder to downsize. If you think you're going to downsize at 69, <laughs> yeah, talk to me. Talk to me about that. You tell me you're going to start downsizing at 69. What I can tell you is good luck with that, bruh, or girl, or whatever. Because <laughs> your chihuahua will outlive you. And guess what your kid's going to do? They're going to liquidate the chihuahua, too. They're going to fight with their siblings about who takes the dog. I told my mom she shouldn't have got that dog. She was too old. No one wants to take the dog. Why? Because the dog can't be liquidated in the cash. Your kids are going to sell everything you ever owned because they want the cash. They want to live their own life. And when they can't sell the chihuahua, they're going to fight like cats and dogs about who has to take it. Because no one wants your dog. And if you're over 70, you shouldn't be getting new dogs. Why? Because your dog's probably going to outlive you. Why? Because the average life expectancy is 80. All right? That's the way it is. All right. Let's stay positive. Good job. M. Toff, you can always buy a new mattress. I, and that's the other thing about getting a home base. I don't want to buy a mattress, guys. I used to have a thousand, uh, $1,500 mattress, queen size. I sleep better in my Jeep Renegade. Now, RV, I, I don't think I'd ever get a mattress. I just get the mattress topper, camping mat. I don't know, man. Mattresses, I think, are a big scam in America. Most people I know with $1,000 mattresses, they don't sleep more than three to four hours. They come into work because they couldn't sleep. That's the truth. They come into work early because they couldn't sleep. I want you to make a mental note tomorrow, everyone who goes to the office. How many people come in early and they say they came in early because they couldn't sleep? They'd rather be in work than in, their, than in their own house. That's the truth. So make a mental note. Good job. Let's continue to read. So he goes, that's not a big deal. I'd say buy a small, old-style Florida house, 70 to 90 square foot. It's not mobile, though. That's why I don't like it. I've seen a lot under 100K. That's true. There are, and there's some poor areas. You can buy a lot cheap. They fare much better in hurricanes. That's true. But look, to me, an RV fares the best because you just get it towed or you just tow it out of there. So there's no damage going to happen to it. I want something on wheels, and I don't want to be anchored down. Uh, I'm not saying that's the way for everyone. Good comment, MTOF. But I, I want something on wheels for that reason. For this reason. Either I could tow it away during a hurricane or if it blows away, I just spend $10,000, I get a new house. If your 700 square foot house blows away, guess what, guys? You're not going to buy a new one for uh, $10,000. Even a module home, you can't buy one for that and have it set in place and all the electric and everything hooked up. So I like the idea, like, look, it, once my RV gets 10, 20, 30 years old or whatever, or it blows away, if it gets dookie stains in it, and I want to throw it away, $10,000 get you a brand new RV. If a hurricane comes, $10,000 get you a brand new RV. I like disposable. All the decisions I make now are, if I have to get rid of this thing, can I get a new one at what cost? I like disposable. So that's how I like it. Good job. I'm traveling. I know a girl making six figures I went to high school with, struggling hard. No, that's true. Look, it doesn't matter. Your, well, it does matter your income. You have to make a certain amount to be out of poverty. How much do you have to make to be out of poverty? I think you want to be above $20 per hour. But look, guys, what I could tell you is this. 80% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, period. Stock market at all-time high, real estate at all-time high. A lot of that is due to people get caught in a rat race. I almost got caught in a rat race. So that's a good comment, traveling man. I agree with that. I'm a traveling man. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I skipped my man. M a WM. I'm with you on beaches. Oh, yeah. I'm tired of just working to pay the bills. I've been there... 
What's the first step you should take, MW or anyone who's totally on fire with your life? The first step you should take is not quit your job. The first step you should take is liquidate your assets. Throw everything out, look at the square footage of your belonging and get out of long-term commitments. Sell your house while the look, guys. If you have a house and you're not inspired with the state or the or the community, now real estate is at an all-time high. Why wouldn't you cash out now? I cashed out two years ago, and guess what? I'm glad I did. Even if my house would have went up at twenty thousand dollars, I wouldn't want to stay in that uh community in that state. And I lived in a, a decent state in a decent community. I just wasn't inspired anymore. Guys, you don't get back two years of your life. Two years make a big difference. Two years ago, you may have been happy in a marriage. Today, you hate your spouse. Two years makes a big difference. Don't waste two years of your life because you're masturbating to Zillow's estimates and you think your house is going to go up another 15%. You only get 80 years on average in this lifetime. You better start making decisions based on a, a number 80 tattooed on your forehead. Every time you look in the mirror, you should see the number 80 tattooed on your forehead. Why? Because that should make you live with a level of urgency. Why? Because most people drag their feet and then they're 69 and they don't have the energy. Guys, you see how much energy I exhort? You ain't going to have a level of energy when you're that old. And if you're, and if you do, you're oddity. Trump's an oddity. That's why I got elected. He had more energy than Hillary Clinton. She was taking naps at night. Donald Trump was banging Stormy Daniels and he was flying to Idaho. He had a lot of energy. Jeb Bush, low energy. He's an oddity though, guys. Most people don't have that energy. And that's why most people admire him. They go, shit, he may be a rough guy, but he's got a lot of energy. Vote for him. And he gets stuff done. You got to have energy to get stuff done. If you think you're going to downsize at 69 with your energy, you're already Jeb Bush. <laughs> and you're already sedating yourself. You're having another drink this time of night. You're basically putting yourself to sleep. Why? Because you can't sleep. You can't get anything done when you have low energy, guys. So what I can tell you is make a mental note. Good job. Uh, Charlie. I send my brother pictures of the beautiful places I go. He gets envious. Yeah, yeah that's true. You are a lucky bastard. That's true. Good point, traveling van. I remember I worked with a guy, and I and he was in the camping. So when I told him about this lifestyle, he was actually very supportive, and I appreciate that. And he goes, Sam, just you just have to be mindful when you tell people. Some aren't going to understand the lifestyle of living in your car, or traveling in an RV. He goes, but some people are going to like it, but they're envious because they're trapped. And he goes, so a lot of backlash that you're going to get is not because people don't think it's cool. It's because people are envious. And I agree with that. But I don't try to rub anything in people's face. But what I found is, if you can't express your joy in front of someone else, don't be around them. I remember even like one of the church people I used to know, like I used to, they used to tell me like their whole drawn out thing about life and what inspires them. And I would listen. I would say, yeah, I want you to win. And then like I would tell them about something exciting that happened to me. And they'd be like, oh, okay. And the, the excitement wasn't there when I was excited. And when someone's not as excited about something as you are, cut them out of your life. And guess what, guys? No one is going to be as excited about things as you are. No one can share your joy and no one can share your suffering. Only you, only you can truly inspire you. So guys, less is more, including relationships. Good job. Uh, WM, I'm trying to save to get this student loan paid off. I can understand that. That's a big burden for a lot of people. Car life sounds live. Well, it does, but it also sounds like sacrifice. When you live in your car in the winter and when you live in your car in the summer. What's the best time to live in your car? Fall and spring because there's moderate climate. Why are most nomads in California? Because it's a moderate all-year climate. Okay. And somewhat in Florida, but mainly only in the winter in Florida, there's a lot of nomads. In the summertime, they all flock. Why? Because it's hot as hell. Guys, I'm sweating right now. I'm going to sweat tonight, guys. I went through like... Seven, I just did laundry on Friday. I got to go do laundry again tomorrow. Why? Because I go through like two, three shirts a day. At night, I'm sweating, guys. I got a battery powered fan, but I got no air conditioning. It was 93 degrees Fahrenheit today, guys. Hot, humid, and muggy. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. I came here for that. I'm not complaining, but what I'm trying to tell you, guys, it's hot as hell. Okay? So if you think like van life is just about like you'd like, look, guys, you're, you're living a primitive life. When you make the decision to live in your car or van, you decide to live like they did thousands of years ago. Like when Solomon had 700 wives. Okay. What I could tell you is this, guys. Every decision requires, or every decision has a pro and a con. The pro of van life is you are living freer than most society. The con is you're constantly moving and you're dealing with the elements more because you don't have the amenities of a home. You don't have those shelter amenities. You have a primitive setup. 
When you check into a campground, you're a primitive camper. So just make a mental note and accept that. Good job. John Suttles. I liked your home base video. Thank you, brother. I do it, but I probably couldn't do it what you do. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Good to see you. Thank you, John. WM. I can watch Hulu. Okay. I, I don't have Netflix or Hulu. I'm a I just do YouTube. I'm a travel man. I have a great water park pass. I remember you telling me that. And the Gulf of Mexico. I'm not mad at that. Those are my swimming pools. I agree. Guys, when you live full-time in your car and you live in Florida or anywhere by the beach, California, what should you do when you're hot going to the beach? The beach is a free pool. I think about that when I go into the ocean. I say, man, I got more privacy in this ocean because there's so much beaches in Florida, way more than Jersey Shore. I say, if I was in the community pool in that RV community, there'd be people all over me. I remember because when I was in HOA back in my house, there were certain old people and certain young people too, some hot girls. They would sit around the pool and they would always be there and they're looking at you. So like if you had a bad day, and you don't feel super sexy. Like when you go to a community pool, you got to put a little bit of an appearance. You can't just roll there like, you know, with no underwear on, jump in the pool and like let your fat ass roll around. You got other people around the pool. Why? Because it's a shared pool. When I go in, in the ocean, it's a shared thing. But guys, I can go to a quiet place where no one is and just do me. When I'm, when I'm in a parking lot, I can pick a private section of the parking lot. I, I got more privacy there than I would at my RV lot. So... That kind of makes me debate, is it worth it to get the RV lot when I have kind of more privacy now than I would if I had that? I just don't have the amenities now that I would if I had that. So that's the trade-off. XP Jeffy's laughing. Good job. WM, in car, thanks to internet. There you go. Uh, it's a lot easier for us compared to answers. I totally agree. Technology and the resources of Starbucks, Planet Fitness, uh, and just the resources that you can get in a shared community, in a shared economy, uh, make money. You can make money doing DoorDash. Where did DoorDash get invented? San Francisco, California. It didn't get invented in Iowa. Okay. Iowa did not invent DoorDash. California did, guys. Okay. So what I could tell you is this. In the shared economy in a technology era, with Google Maps, Googling campgrounds, reserving campgrounds with your phone, I do everything through my phone. I bank I make reservations, I call people, I do emails. Guys, it's easier than ever to live on the road and mobility is a premium. Mobility and flexibility should be part of any decision because that's part of the future, it's always been. The more mobile you are, the more flexibility you have, the greater leverage you have in society. And that's one of the reasons why I'm cautious to get a home base because I know without a shadow of a doubt, the minute I commit to that, I lose a level of flexibility. I gain amenities, but I lose flexibility. Right now, what is my greatest asset? My flexibility. That's your greatest asset. Uh, so just be mindful of that. Good job. Free to be me. Decide to be all you can be 100. I agree with that. Love you first. Amen. Show up and forward. Uh, free to be me. Great comment. Great to see you, brother. Stay positive. I'm tough. The best swimming pool is the ocean. I agree with that. Good comment, brother. Uh, F pools. Uh, I just kind of broke that down. I would tend to agree with that now. Chlorine and human waste. I I, I tend to agree. I'm tough. Good comment. Charlie Van. My little AC has been working excellent in this floor. I got I to gotta figure out a better AC system, man. I know you got like some type of AC system in your van. I remembered from your video, but Traveling Van shut down his channel. Why? Because some psychopaths started threatening him. Uh, that's what happens on YouTube, guys. He goes, I, and the guy shops at Dollar Tree and he makes, uh, you know, like serial murderous threats to Traveling Van. Traveling Van, you did the right thing though, brother. Better to keep your privacy. I wasn't sure if it would be, but I'll be darned it does. I got to figure out something for my AC. Thank you, Traveling Van. I'm tough. May was hottest on record in Florida. Was I complaining? Nope. 95 was okay with me. I'm tough. Me too. Someone give me a sun emoji and then fire emoji because I like it hot as hell, guys. That's my guy Milano. Sammy. Thanks to the hot weather. Yeah, less people around. I totally agree. You told that. You told me that years ago. And it changed my life. I was living in my car in New Jersey. I visited Florida because I visited Florida for two years, guys, before I committed. And I remember one of the last times I was going back up north. I was getting very sad every time I have to go back up north. And I was making a mental note, like, because originally I wanted to be a snowbird. And every time I would go back up north, even in the summer, I said, man, I don't want to go back up north. I don't like the culture. I don't like the feel. And it wasn't hot as I thought in June. Like right now, it's not that hot in the Jersey Shore. And I made a mental note. I said, if I went back to New Jersey, I wouldn't go to like the end of June or July. And then go for a vacation, a couple of weeks or a month. And... Milano said, Sammy, it's a good thing that it's, it gets real hot in the summer in Florida because that keeps the masses away. And I agree with that. And that's a good thing. Good job. Uh, Jack Fix. 
you fibbed to the art teacher laughing. Well, yeah, well, that was one of them. One of them was a great artist. I'm not going to lie. So one of them had phenomenal artistic skills. Now, I didn't really date her. I kind of liked her, but my op opportunity didn't present itself. But I thank God I didn't marry her uh, or get with her. I wouldn't even say marry, just get with her. I don't know why I said marry. But look, the bottom line is I'm sure I let some girls down too. So I don't want to sit here on my pedestal. I'm sure some girls that, that used to know me when, when I had a Jaguar, when I was dressing in Versace, they look at me now and say, Sam's living in his car. I'm glad I didn't date him. <laughs> what a feeling's mutual. So I don't want to like just sit here and pang my chest, even though I probably look better than her husband and I'm more inspired than her husband. <laughs> Your husband's sitting over there in the other room, damn near half asleep. Low energy guy like Hillary Clinton sleeping at 1030 at night. <laughs> Low energy guy, guys. <laughs> That's all right. I'll be the president. All right, good job. Uh, XP Jeff, he's like, ooh, Eric. Starts looking for a teacher in the occupational field on dating sites. <laughs> look, guys. I was on Match.com for a season of my life. Let me tell you this. A bunch of girls are going to say looks are not important to them. And then the next line under that will be, if you don't have a profile picture, don't bother to private message me. Basically saying, if I can't see what you look like, I don't want to engage with you. Now, the line before, they say looks don't matter to them. It's the inner beauty. But then they say after that, that if you don't have a profile picture, don't message me. <laughs> hey, I thought it didn't matter. Yeah, guess what, guys? It matters. All right, good job. And you better be tall with a nice ass. Because if you're not tall with a nice ass, they can't see you having a kid. Unless they get their heart totally devastated by a guy who's tall and a nice ass, then they're going to go for the guy who's short, stocky, and they know they can control. Why did they end up settling for the guy who was short and stocky? Because the guy with the tall, at, tall and nice ass left him for dead. And now they want someone to control. Who can they control? The short, stocky guy that's insecure. Why? Because he's a chihuahua that will get a sweater forced on him. Okay? And that's how it goes, guys. Uh, let's take positive. Milano. Sammy, we had the hottest weather of all time. That's how I like it, brother. Marin, Southwest Florida's in the house. Hey, Marin. How are you today? Let's take a hydration break, and then we're going to read Marin's comment. Love and respect, guys. We're coming in hot tonight, man. Very good. Uh... Okay, hydration break. Marin, three palm trees, three hearts, yoga girl, three swimming in the oceans, could get, or the chlorine while all the people at the HOA watch you. Another yoga, three hearts, three palm trees. What do people with, uh, what about people with finance degrees? Not as good as nurses or teachers. Uh, people with finance degrees uh, basically will get laid off from their job when the economy changes and then they'll blame the president. Then they'll become bitter. They'll become a political junkie. And then after they become a political junkie, what they'll do is they'll basically become loan sharks. So they're not going to do like the mafia did back in the day where they loan you money at a high interest rate, but they'll work for some type of sub bank that will loan other small businesses, high interest loans. Uh, and it's basically like being a loan shark. Uh, so that's what happens to people with finance degrees. They basically thought they were smart, but they will fail because everyone fails in life. Then they will turn bitter. They'll turn into a political junkie. They'll vote for anyone who will pander to their tax cutting ass. But the, the fact that they won't want to admit that they made major financial decisions that failed. Most people who have a financial degree, they will never want to admit failure because they're supposed to be smarter than everyone. Thus, the reason they will become bitter they will become a political junkie, and then they will basically be a glorified loan, loan shark. So what I can tell you is good luck with that. You're better off getting a chihuahua because that emotional that emotional support is going to be lacking. You're going to resent your husband. Then you're going to want someone else to fill in that gap, and that person's basically going to end up being an emotional tampon for you. Why? Because your husband basically took a crap on you. Why? Because he left you emotionally abandoned. And all you want someone is to love you. Don't you remember the Scarface movie? Scarface was... He finally made it very successful. Scarface made it very successful. He was at the table with um, Michelle Pfeiffer or whatever her name was, and Milano or whatever his side guy was. And, and he was starting to talk business. He had a financial degree basically at that point. And Michelle Pfeiffer said, why do you guys always talk business? That's boring. Look, guys, after a while, a girl doesn't want you to talk business. Why? Because after a while, that's boring. She wants you to be financially secure, but she don't want to talk business. What does she want to talk about? Chihuahuas, art, philosophy, you know, with something, uh, colors of uh, stuff, home decor. Your girl is more impressed with home decor than your financial degree. That's the truth. That's the truth. 
So what I could tell you is this, guys. Keep it simple. All right, I just broke down life. Good job. Traveling van, hashtag Florida. Well, brother, hashtag heart emoji because I love Florida too. I'm a traveling van. I love it when I hear people complain it's too hot. Yeah, me too. I get that. I think, yep, they'll be gone another week. Damn it, traveling van. Me and you are on the same page on that. Jalen, what's up, brother? Nomad in the city is a whole other game than in the country. Well, I agree. Look, guys, I did a video from Manhattan of a guy living in his tent. Okay. And what I can tell you is whether you're in the city, suburbs, or you're in the country land, it's possible. It's just a different way to do it. Okay. So, uh, anything can be done guys. Uh, but it's all about what you want to do and what you're willing to do. Uh, so love and respect. Uh, but don't limit your mind. Don't limit your mind. Like if you're in a city, you couldn't do it. Cause that's BS. I know plenty of people doing it. I'm not saying I would want to do it, but I've seen people do it. Okay. I, I was with a guy in Florida. There's a part of the town that's very, uh, bad ghetto. You go 10 minutes up the road, it's a beautiful community. And he was like trying to like sing this sad story about how he's in this bad community. I said, brother, I said, you go 10 minutes up the road, you're in one of the best communities in the world. I said, why don't you just, why don't you just go over there and spend most of your time there? He couldn't go past because he, some people like the fact that they could throw a pity party that they got no choice. You have a choice. You have a choice to start your car and to go 10 minutes up the road or to go 30 minutes up the road to get out of your situation. But guess what? You have to start owning your decisions. You don't go forward in life until you own your decisions. And if you have an excuse for one thing, it'll be for another thing. And so that's what I figured out in life. Good job. Uh, Milano, Sammy, even if you know the game, sometimes we get blinded by emotions. I've been there. Good comment, Milano. Totally agree. Vanomatic alone 100. Me and you on the same page on that, Jeffrey. Don't rush into buying this travel trail on a piece of land, Sam. I agree with that. I haven't rushed. Guys, even that video I did was from a couple of weeks ago. So I've been very methodical. I want to put some type of time frame on a decision, uh, but I'm not rushing. I agree with that. Traveling van alone 100. Me and you on the same page on that also. Jack Fix. Have a great night. You too, brother. Thank you. Keep pushing forward to your dreams. You can do it. You're a smart guy. Got a good attitude. Stay going forward. Doug, that's my brother, Doug. Very encouraging, Doug. Hey, Sam, good evening and nice to see you live. Doug, great man. He lives in New Mexico. He loves New Mexico. He works at an RV dealership. He's been working at an RV dealership for four months. He left a comment today and he said the one thing he learned working in an RV dealership is that everyone agrees that RVs are pieces of craps and poorly made. And that after 10 years, they're, that's pretty much their life expectancy. Now, some of them still own an RV. Why? Because it may not be a financially appreciating asset. It may not be well made, but it inspires them. It gives them quality of life. So guys, everything is not just about financial. You have to be inspired with life. Because if you can buy a condo or a single family house that's well put together, but you totally hate it, you're better off in a depreciating RV. Why? Because you have to live an inspired life. But Doug made a great point. And I took note to Doug's wisdom and I thank him for sharing it. But I also want you to be mindful that it's not just about one thing. It's about, about a variety of things and quality of life and what you enjoy in life. Good job, Doug. I love you, brother. Little fiery one. Well, shout out to you, sweetheart. Good to see you. And I'm at it. Knowledge 1000. Yeah, thank you. Malam, Sammy, we need to learn how to negotiate as early as you can. Look, guys, the best negotiation is having a year's worth of savings in a savings account, a year's worth of expenses in a savings account. And not touching that even for a home base, okay? Because if you don't always have a year's worth of expensing in a savings account, there's no negotiation because you, you shouldn't be buying it. And have I done made that mistake? I've made that mistake, guys. Your savings account is your best negotiation skill. Why? Because you should never touch it for any purchase unless it's a total emergency. And buying a home base is not a total emergency. So that's number one. And then number two is you have an income, you're living below your means, and then you are willing to walk away. Now, if you're willing to walk away, if you have a savings account worth a year of expenses and you have an income, you have a lot going in your favor. But guess what? Just because you have a lot going in your favor does not guarantee you're going to get a good deal. Why? Because the other person may be in the same exact position. So eventually someone has to blink. China or U.S. have to blink on a trade deal. Okay, both both countries have pros and cons, guys. So, like, if both parties are are good off, no one's a good deal is not someone always getting a steal. Sometimes a good deal is just two people who mutually agree on the same thing. 
So don't always try to get like this phenomenal deal. You have to get a deal that you agree with. Guys, I paid 27000 but after I included tax everything on a Jeep Renegade, Trailhawk Edition. Some people say, Sam, that wasn't a good deal. I thought it was a good deal. The sticker price was 33000 I paid 27000 After taxes and everything, I spent thirty. Now, I know you can get a lower model uh, Renegade. You can get a cheaper Renegade, but I wanted this one. Some people say it was a bad deal. I guess I said it was a good deal. Why? Because I negotiated what I was willing to spend based on my situation. So everyone has a different idea of how to negotiate, but those are the parameters of negotiation. Good job. Zelda, hey, Zelda, hey, Sam. Peace emoji and heart and prayer and hydration break. Damn it. Thank you for reminding me to you. Brandon, been played so many times by women. Now I'm um, like a mental Jedi. I see them dressing provocative and asking me to do something for them. I laugh and walk away. Well, hey, look, guys, seduction, seduction is a very manipulative tool. And most people only like it to the point they can seduce you, men and women. A lot of times once men have sex with you, they don't want you. They seduce you. A lot of times once women know they can control you, they don't respect you. Why? They seduced you. After you've been seduced, not many people will respect you. That's the truth. People only respect you when you have your own joy, your own confidence, your own life. When you are totally dependent on the other person for your, for your joy, for your life, you scare them, they look down upon you, and that's when they want to get away from you. I've been there on both sides. Keep your own life, keep your own joy, keep your own hobbies, keep your own confidence. Because if you start to depend on someone else too much for one of those things, guys, they're going to walk away scared as hell. Why? Uh, because no one can make you happy. Only you can do it. Happiness inside job. Good job. Tony, Sam, how's Florida, brother? Hot, sweaty, and just how I like it. I love you, brother. Good to see you, man. Love and respect to Baltimore. Uh, uh, Maryland, I mean, I'm sorry. Venomatic, walk away. Hey, when in doubt, do that. I agree with that. Cameron, hey, Sam, hey, brother. Jody, hey, Jody. Jody lives in a uh, park model module home. She left a comment on her channel today. She basically hates her neighbors. She's lived in a module home now for a little bit, I guess. Her neighbors are all in her business. She's very upset about that. And she said, be cautious about that. And I understand that. And I appreciate that comment. Uh, let's get, see what she got to say. She goes, my motto in life is to live a simple, happy, healthy, tiny life. I agree with that. I saw your uh, slogan. Keep it simple. Jody, good comment. Love to you. And thank you for the comments, Tony. Sam, I've been to Ellis Island. There you go. It's in runes now besides the state. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's right... Um, they have done some renovations on uh, the Statue of Liberty. The last time I was up there, uh, there's a, a park in Jersey City. I forgot the name of the park, but it's got the Jersey City 9-11 uh, Memorial. Uh, and they got like ferries that take out to Ellis Island. But yeah, look, guys. Ellis Island, the Statue of Liberty, was a major point of immigration for this country. Um. And we're at a different point in history where now we're no longer building a place to accept people. We're building walls to keep people out. There's nothing wrong with a legal immigration process, but Ellis Island was, all right, we, we're going to accept immigrants, but we're going to not just build a wall. We're going to also build a port where people can legally come into the country and go through a process. So now we don't have the same emphasis on how do you get through the process? The only, like the only sure way I know that you can automatically get your papers is you marry Donald Trump, okay? Or you marry some other citizen. You date an Uber driver. And then after two years of dating an Uber driver, you say, oh, this guy don't have no career. Uber only makes $10, $15 an hour. Then what do you do? You get a divorce. And then everyone hates each other. Why? Because we don't have Ellis Island anymore, okay? What we have is everyone just trying to get their papers by any means necessary, and I understand that. But what I could tell you is, we have to have a streamlined process for people who want to responsibly, legally come into this country and work for it, okay? Because if we're going to have a merit-based a merit -based system, I want to know what Melania's merit was, okay? So uh, let's, let's be fair in our evaluation. Good job, Tony. Um, besides the statue, all the buildings are in disarray. Okay, I take your word for that one, brother. Thank you for the comment, brother. Love to you, man. Stay positive. Uh, Danny, hey Sam, 
Someone stole my kid's motorcycle last night out of the garage. I'm sorry to hear that, brother. Out of the garage? I remember when I was a child, I had a couple bikes stolen, and I felt very violated. I can only imagine how violated you feel out of the garage. Look, guys, safety is an illusion. Uh, so sometimes you can have more problems living in a house than living on the road. But, brother, I'm sorry to hear that. I uh, hope everything works out, man. I know how violated you can feel, man. Thank you for sharing. Gypsy the Nomad. Caught you live finally. Well, good to have you. Love and respect you. Thank you for the comment. Tony. Danny, get a GPS for it. My drummer has one on his motorcycle. Yeah, also, too, put a security camera on the outside of your house, man. That's the biggest thing nowadays, documentation. I'm even thinking about, I should, I should really have a dash cam in my car. So those are two good suggestions. Tony, I hope you find it. Me too, Jalen. I've never seen a desperate person thriving. That's a good point. And I've been desperate in life, and I've been thriving. So desperation comes when you feel you have no choices left. So I can understand that. So I don't look down on a desperate person. But I definitely try to get away from them because a desperate person, when someone is drowning, even if you go to help them, they'll pull you down with them because they're desperate. They're, they're scared. Guys, I want you to remember this when you think about helping people. And you should help people, but there's a way and, and a time to help people. When someone is truly desperate, you have to be very cautious on how you approach them and if you even should approach them. Because when you go to save a drowning person, if you're not well-trained and if you're not skillful in your approach, they will pull you down under the rip current with them because they're, they're desperate. So make a mental note of that, guys. Good job. Dan A, thanks for only thumbs up. I appreciate that. I appreciate everyone, too. If you haven't, click the thumbs up button. Share the video. Thank you. Tony, Danny, do you have a serial number? If so, take it to the police in case uh, dummy to the porn. Okay. A uh, porn shop, I mean. Okay. Uh, little fire one. Silver Lines Playbook is a great movie. Awesome movie. Lots of gems tonight. Thank you, uh, Lil Fiery One. Love to you. Alan Noise, what's up, brother? Hey, Sammy. Glad to catch you live again. Always good to have you, man. I appreciate your vibes, man. Thank you, brother. Danny, my ex gave me a, I don't know how to say that, a diver colitis? I don't know what that is. I haven't had an incident since the divorce. I don't know what that is, man, but that don't sound good. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Milano. Sammy, you know our comfort zone sometimes is stronger than change in life. Yeah, it's true. That is why people stick with what's easy stuff. Great comment, Milano. You've been through a lot in life, brother. Uh, good comment, brother. Illinois. What's a coffee maker? Isn't that the person at Starbucks? That's a uh, great comment, Illinois. Why? Because look, guys, I have no maintenance pretty much in life now, other than my car. I go to Starbucks. I got the best coffee. I don't have to clean anything. I don't have to have milk in the refrigerator, soy milk. I don't have to have a coffee maker. I don't have to have coffee filter. I don't have to have coffee grinds. I don't have to have cups. I don't have to have silverware. If I want egg whites and, and uh, a bagel, I just order it. I don't have to cook it. I don't have to get crumbs everywhere. I don't have to have a toaster oven. Now I'm in a shared environment. Sometimes I'm in Starbucks and someone sits directly across next to me. And they stink and they're loud. So I, I have some sacrifice, guys. But I have the option to get up and move. Like if my neighbor all of a sudden come and they're loud and they're making noise or something happens or I don't like them, they just keep looking at me. I can't just get up and move. So my freedom and flexibility is my greatest asset. Once you become anchored down, you have more privacy, but you're also subject to your area more because you're anchored down. So there's pros and cons. Good comment. Right. Sam, you have a point, but I don't have that much and I keep my place clean. I'm not mad at that. So I don't have any worries. But, um, oh my God, just dropped my ice water down my pants and I got no underwear on. <laughs> Imagine if I did that in my house, I'd have to clean up now. Woo! Woo! It's cold. <laughs> I just dropped some of this down my pants. All right, let's take a pause. Let me take a hydration break. And he goes, uh, Tony, I don't have any worries, but I'm on the road most of the time. I'm never really here. That's what I remember at the end of having my house. I said, man... The amount of time I'm in my house versus the amount of my financial resources and mental resources that are going towards my house, I'm only in my house basically to sleep and take a crap. Most of the time, I'm not in my house. I'm at work or I'm traveling or I'm doing something. And so what you're going to realize after you get the ice water out of your shorts because your balls are now freezing, oh my God, is that, guys, how much, I thought about that today. Like when I was at the park and when I was in the ocean, I said, Sam, if I had a home base right now, would I, be? the only time I really want a home base is at nighttime. Like right now, after this live feed at nighttime is the hardest for a nomad. The morning is the best because the morning you wake up and you realize you have no commitments. The nighttime is a little bit weary because you're, you're in the middle of the night. You're in a car, man. 
Uh, so, but that's a good point. Milano, Sammy, sacrifices. You need to give up something in order to get something. That's totally true. To get to the other side, that's 2.2. Journey with Jordan. That's a brother from Tennessee. There is a pyramid building in Tennessee, Mem Memphis, Tennessee, that there used to be a basketball team play there. Now, it's a big, big bass pro shop. Okay? So what I can tell you guys is, let's continue to read what Journey with Jordan got to say. Sammy, whether or not you decide to get the home base plus travel trailer or not, I hope you come to peace with whatever decision you make. Thank you for the positive comment. Seems like a pretty good deal if that's what you want to do. Journey with Jordan, I appreciate the positive comment, and I appreciate you hanging with me, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, Tony, Sammy, my insurance came through. See, that's the other part about a home base. As soon as you get a home base, got to have insurance. Now, I'm not going to have flood insurance or anything. Why? Because uh, one, it's a little bit in the flood zone. And two is I just got a travel trailer. And that's why I want an RV lot. So I don't have to worry about anything. If I lose the RV, I lose it. But I got to have liability insurance. Like if my RV blows into someone else, that's a liability, guys. And many times a house is not just an asset. It's a liability. So I think about that. I, I'm worried about that a little bit. Let's read what Tony got to say. He was saying my insurance came through. I'm getting a uh, Yamaha something top of the line sacks. I'm not mad at that. You worked hard, brother. That's a business expense. I'm getting the best of the best, brother. Good for you. You deserve it. You're a positive person. I'm writing now, so we'll see in about seven songs to the album. Brother, I'm proud of you. Shout out to the Saxaholics, man. Liz D. Thin line, yeah, between a caretaker and an undertaker. Yeah, that's, put that on T-shirt, guys. If I ever start selling merchandise, there's a couple of ones I can guarantee you will put on T-shirt. The first one is capitalism may be corrupt, but at least we have free porn. The second is there's a thin line between a caretaker and an undertaker. All right, let's be careful. <laughs> Danny. Yes, Tony, I filled a police report with Barney File. Okay. Tony, man, the undertaker farting dirt so old. Yeah, that was, that was a, I watched a YouTube video of it. They're, they're older, man. Jalen, yoga match for life. I'm not mad at that. <laughs> Traveling man, Duke emoji. Good job, Traveling man. Doug. Hey, Sam. I have to be up at 4.30 a.m. at work. I'm proud of you, brother. I love you, man. I lo shout out to you and Pam. Yes, thanks to you, I keep up with my workout schedule. Good job, brother. Self-care. Yes, self-care is part of every decision. Good comment, Doug. When you make a decision, you have to ask yourself, how is this going to affect my self-care? If you get five dogs, you can basically put your self-care in a trash can. Why? You can't take care of five dogs and go to the gym. You're burnt out. Guys, five dogs? I, I had one dog. I couldn't even do full self-care. If you have a dog, a job, you think you can go to the gym every day. Not going to happen. If you have a dog, a job, a kid, guess what you're going to be doing? Weight Watchers. Why? Because it's the only thing that may save you, but you're desperate. You're so desperate to lose weight. You seek out Oprah's counsel. You know you're desperate to lose weight when you ask Oprah how to lose weight. <laughs> Oprah's laughing at you, man. Oprah's fat. So what I can tell you is this, man. Good comment, man. Let's continue to read. Uh, you take care, my friend. And I will tune in when I can. I love you, man. You're, I love you, Doug. Good night to you, brother. Good night to you, too. I'm a trial man. I use a yoga mat and a camping mattress. Good job. Uh, it's my box spring. Good job. And a Coleman cot mattress. Okay. Is the mattress very comfortable? I agree. I've never been more comfortable than sleeping in my car. I agree with that. I thought about that with the travel trailer. I said, I actually may be more comfortable sleeping in my car than a travel trailer. I said to myself, am I going to buy this lot and be sleeping in my car still? I don't know. <laughs> I'm basically buying a parking lot. Bruce, the summer's the worst for the seats are hot as hell. You got swamp ass. But guys, I like swamp ass. I'm not going to lie. Uh, love to you, man. Enjoy the dream life. You're still with me, brother. Six-figure income and struggling. She has a spending problem, not an income problem. Sam, you are living a better lifestyle. Give me the car. Look, I understand. I worked with a guy that was way above, well, not way above me, but he was above me. Uh, but he was definitely living paycheck to paycheck. Great guy. I appreciate him. He did some things for me, and I'm very thankful. But what I could tell you was he had two houses. He had a boat. He had two cars, and he had, like, four kids. So, guys, you could be making $200,000 a year. If you got four kids, a dog, two cars, two houses, and a boat, guess what you're doing? You're making less than someone working at Walmart that's single. So XB Jeffy, he's 26 living in his car. What's my advice to him? Show up and keep it simple. Don't get in a relationship if you're not ready. Because, man, you could work at Walmart. You're making more than a guy making $200,000 a year. So, guys, make it. now, I'm being a little bit 
ingest because you have to make a certain amount of income to be financially free. If you're single, I think you want to be 15 to $20 an hour. That's just starting to get ahead and then build from there. Uh, but look, when you're totally destitute, where do you start? You start $10 an hour, guys. And what I could tell you is if you get a job at Walmart or, or any place like that and you make $10 an hour that and you work 40 hours a week, that's $1,600 a month pre-tax. A lot of you guys are trying to survive on $1,000 a month or less. But let me tell you something. If you work at Walmart for 10 hours, I mean for uh, $10 an hour, and you work 40 hours a week, you get $1,600 a month pre-tax. And guess what you got to do? You got to show up and not get in trouble. And if you show up for a year, for two years, I guarantee you're going to get a promotion, you're going to get more than $10 an hour. Most people won't show up. Showing up is the biggest part of any career. If you show up and you're willing to deal with people, because you, why should you deal with people? Because you shouldn't let anyone mess up your money. If you're scared to deal with people at your job, guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to deal with people on the street because you don't have enough money to go live life on your terms. You have to barter with people. You have to pander to people and you have to be manipulated by people. Why? Because you need assistance. You have to survive. When you build your own life financially and you don't take on too many commitments, you can thrive. I'll make a mental note. Uh, Tony, I'm thinking of buying a boat, oh, us total money pit, man, and living on it. I, I would, I think you should do whatever you want. I support you and I love you. That's number one. Number two is a boat is a money pit and I don't like it as a living terms because it's not on the open road. You don't have as many resources. You can't take a boat to Planet Fitness. You can't take a boat to Starbucks. Why is that important? Because those are your resources. So if you have a boat, you're going to have to pay for a dock. You can't like go free boondocking. You have to pay for a boondock. You have to pay for a dock. So you're going to have to pay for a parking slip, a, boom, a, a dock slip. You're going to need electricity. You're going to need running water. You're going to need to take a shower. Or you're going to need a car and a boat. So traveling man used to live in a boat in New Jersey. And then he started living in a van in St. Augustine. Now, I don't know what he's doing now. But just be, make a mental note of that, brother. But I support you either way. Journey with Jordan. Ben Carson, what a disgrace. Ben Carson, Trump called him a psychopath. Why? Because in his own book, in Ben Carson's own self-published book or self, uh, di di he called himself a psychopath. I think he tried to like stab his mom. So what happened to Ben Carson when he lost the election? Trump made him the secretary of housing. <laughs> so now who's in charge of public housing? A psychopath. Someone who tried to stab his own mother. <laughs> yeah, good job, Trump. Another great point. Uh, let's continue reading. Ben Carson was taking naps during the debates. Yep. Now, now he's the president of public housing. Even lower energy than Jeb. Yeah. Now we can blame him for every type of a housing event. Good job. Enjoy the dream life. Selling off stuff I don't need rest in garbage can. I, I agree with that. Throw it all out, man. Uh, sell some stuff, but uh, throw most of it out. I agree with that. Enjoy, uh, enjoy the dream life. He's from Canada looking to come down to Florida full time as in, on an investor visa. Uh, he missed a boat. Melania already married Trump. So how is uh, a Canadian going to get down to Florida full time? He's going to apply for a uh, investor visa. Okay. So you guys look into that. If you're from, we got some Canadian viewers. If you want to come down here full time and you can't find an Uber driver to marry. Enjoy your dream life says a uh, friend, girlfriend says to him, your neighbor says hi and bye. She lives besides a guy whose wife died two weeks ago, bringing him soup and having a beer with him on the weekend. I said, End it. Oh, brother, I agree with that, but you can't tell people nothing, man. G Gerald, for AC, can you just idle your Jeep? It should be two to five at night. Well, it's illegal to idle in most places. So you're going to have your car running. You're going to build up carbon monoxide, too. You can have a carbon monoxide detector, but I wouldn't recommend that as a habit. And you're going to basically burn out your car if you're running it for two to five hours every night idling it. You're basically going to burn your car out. Uh, so I would not recommend that as a sustainable way for once in a while way. Yes. For a sustainable way. Maybe if you had a hybrid like a Prius, because it has an extra, extra battery and self-generating power, but not a regular gas automobile, only like a hybrid, like a Prius. Tony. Yeah. Sun and fire emoji. Good job. Thank you, Alice. Looking good tonight. Well, thank you, Alice. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you for coming. Alice. Love to you, sweetheart. Keep doing you. Thank you. WMFI. I'm a female. All right. Laughing. Thanks for your channel. Thank you for the comment. I'm a travel man. I have a planet named Brumahida in my cup holder for my pet emotional support, emotional tampon, campaign, etc. etc. Good job, travel man. Joey, what's up, man? Yeah, Sledge. How you stay? 
I don't know, know what that means. I'm a trial man. I think Broomhilda is using me for carbon dioxide. That's okay. I'm using her for oxygen. Traveling van, everyone's using someone for something. That's truth. Uh, Marin, traveling van, I love your room to hide. Made me smile. Good job. My goal is up, man. What's up, Sam? Best form of negotiating is be able to walk away and not look back. Well, that's a good comment. I agree with that. Good job, Milano. Sammy, Bob Wells made a video about cheap rent, $500 a year. <laughs> You can get a thousand trails camping membership for less than a thousand dollars. So there is ways to do it. I don't know what his video is about, but there is ways to do it. If you're willing to move, you're going to spend it, but you have to count the cost in gas, in an RV and maintenance and the mental and emotional stress of the constant movement. Uh, but, but there are ways to do it. Uh, but you may not be in the best RV park. Like you may get that rent. You may be either in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico or in some trashy RV park in Florida. So everything has a trade-off, guys. They're not just like giving away free stuff, but there are ways to navigate the system that you can live below your means. So that's a good comment. Milano, free water, Wi-Fi, et cetera. Well, yeah, 100, yeah 110 degrees in, in Arizona. Well, I also saw, I saw the video Milano, Milano did, I mean, uh, Emilio did about the uh, rest area that was allowing uh, people to park for $5 a night. So I checked that. That was a good video, man. Have you ever done that uh, place, uh, Milano? Cameron, you skipped me. I'm sorry, brother. Say it again. Uh, there's a lot of comments tonight. I apologize for that. Uh, could you write it again? Uh, Mila, maybe you need a little bit of cooling off. I'm hot as hell right now. I'll tell you that. No fire. One, three gems. Safety is an illusion to a certain extent. Okay. But when you see a psychopath come up to your door at night, uh, it's real. And I've had that happen once or twice. Not good, but thank God I was all right. We have had lost touch with what it takes to survive and the basics of protection. Guys, she doesn't shave her legs, guys. Little fire ones are survivalists. So what can I tell you? She ain't shaving her legs. Do I care? No. I actually like a little bit of a hairy girl in her snatch. Not her legs necessarily, but I'm not mad at that. Let's continue to read. Living in my car has taught me to be more in touch with my survival instincts. Well, I definitely tell you don't shave your legs. Am I mad at that? No. Why? Because I don't wear underwear. I love you, little fire one. Good job. James. Sam, baby. I just got off of work, and the first thing I got was this click. Well done. I appreciate that. Tony. Sam. I want that. It's a disaster hoodie. Well, that's definitely coming to uh, 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 YouTube uh, merchandise soon. Thank you, man. James, Sam, this whole weekend has been under the Undertaker and Goldberg. I saw that messing up their finishes during the match. Hey, guys, they're in their 50s. So when you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, look, guys, average life expectancy is 80. I want you, every time you look in the mirror, to see a tattoo on your forehead of 8-0 because that's the average life expectancy. So what does that mean? That means no matter how much your mind wants to do a wrestling match at the age of 52, your body will not allow you to body slam the undertaker. And your caretaker is not your caretaker. They are the undertaker. So what I can tell you is be careful. Child man, kids are hell expensive. It's the most expensive thing you can do. The government estimates that every kid from the age 0 to 18 costs $250,000 to raise. So every time you have a kid, you take out a mortgage for $250,000 for 18 years. Make a mental note. Uh, like, yeah, I agree. Jeremy Jordan, at Tony. I would also be interested in a disaster merchandise. Thank you. Tony, you have a point, Sam. I'll think on it. Thank you, brother. Masa, hello, Sam. I was wondering, how do you sleep in your car? I got a couple videos on that, man. Look at my playlist. I got a playlist called Nomad Simple Living. Got a lot of videos showing that. If you love what you do, whether for 20 whether for 10 or 20, it doesn't matter. Oh, it does matter. Yeah, because look, guys, if, if you're doing what you love, I do agree with you that you'll do more of what you love for less. But you have to make a certain... If I was... I love doing YouTube. But if I was making no money after two years, I wouldn't still do it. Uh, you have to make a certain amount of income. Uh, if not, you won't keep doing it, at least for me. Why? Because your time is is valuable. You have a tattoo of 8-0 on your forehead. You have a tattoo of 80 that means every time you waste time doing something that's not bringing you financial money. Now, if you enjoy to do it, there's something to be said for that. That's a good point. I'm just trying to say you also have to balance it out with your time. Because if you're doing something and you're not getting adequately compensated, it's not a job, it's a hobby. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with that because hobbies keep us alive. So you make bring up a valid point. I'm just bringing balance. Uh, good job, Tony. And you need a certain amount of money to be out of poverty, guys. You can live in your car, but if you're making $10 an hour, you're still going to be in poverty. 
I, I don't care how much I love doing something. I don't love being in poverty. Okay. So what I can tell you is I got to make at least enough not to live in poverty. Then I'm happy. Now, some people say, Sam, I'm happy in poverty. I say, God bless you. I'm not mad at you, but you got to be mindful of that. Good job, Tony. Hey, Sam, you need a battery powered fan, brother. I got one. When you're in Florida, you could have 20 battery-powered fans. Guys, it's like 100 degrees right now. <laughs> I'm fucking sweating my ass off, man. Good job. Uh, Jeremy Jordan. He has one, an AC unit. He plans on testing it out. I tried the AC unit. I can't fit in my car. I'm going to have to figure something out. Thank you, uh, Jeremy Jordan. Tony. Uh, okay, awesome. I was wondering about that. All right, guys. Thank you. I got to all live comments, guys. I'm sweating. I'm hot. It's late at night. got to go find a parking spot. So what I can tell you is this, guys. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you clicking the thumbs up button. I appreciate you sharing the video. And remember... Decisions require thought, research, and considering the factors of how long are you going to be committed, how is it going to affect not just your finances, but your emotional and mental health, and that everything in life changes. So no decision is permanent with regards to if you'll always like something. So be cautious. Sometimes error on the side of caution, but you have to be somewhat aggressive in life to push forward. Live below your means. Keep good people around you. Those will be the guiding principles of every good decision. Okay? Peace and love. Dennis, thank you for the comment. I appreciate that. 